Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria 3. I am the chairman and today we are going to be starting another Let's Play. Last time we played as Central America, we are going to be playing as a nation of Dynam. We're going to see if we can't make Dynam into one of the top 10 great powers. Now before I start this video, I just want to encourage you guys to go ahead, like, and subscribe to my channel. I cover uh, Victoria 3 content and EU4 content. Let's get into it as Dynam. Okay, so here we are as Dynam. We are an absolute monarchy. Go Government were wise. Uh, yeah, landowners, political operator, uh, imperious. Well, that's actually kind of nice. We get a nice decree cost here and less radicals and more loyalists. Law wise, traditionalist. Uh, I believe we are isolationist. Oh, no. Never mind. That would be here. Yeah. We're actually a mercantilist. Oh, that's actually really nice. No wonder Dynam starts off in a better spot. Uh, we are making about 6,000 pounds in terms of buildings, no urban buildings, tons of rural. Well, not, never mind. Not a lot of rural stuff. Actually, only two rice farms, three livestock ranches, two opium plantations. Now, that's pretty nice. Two tea plantations and two fishing wards. And no construction sectors either. So let's go ahead and improve relations with Great Ching, Burma. Uh, I have a rivalry with Siam to start off the game. Let's also improve relations with East India Company, uh, Great Britain also. And who else has an interest here? Portugal actually does. So let's improve relations with Portugal. I can also declare an additional interest in an area. So let's go ahead and declare an interest in Indonesia. Technology wise, we're going to go straight for society. Uh, and we are going to go for academia because we want our people to be able to read and qualify for better paying jobs. Pre wise, we are going to be building. Oh, we only have three states. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so our most populous state is Anam, which is this one. Then our capital state of Tonkin and then Macon. So, of course, since we only have three states, we kind of have a little bit more to work with here. Agriculture-wise, yeah, we could build agricultural buildings in every single one of these states. Uh, Resource-wise, these two are going to be our best bet. So maybe Anam is going to be like our actual like heavy resource place. And then industry-wise is going to be Tonkin. Like that, we're going to do encourage resource industry in Anam, agricultural industry in Mekong, and manufacturing in Tonkin. And we will also promote social mobility here in Tonkin. Uh, Building-wise, we are going to build one construction sector here and one here to get us started off with two and we are gonna we don't have any logging camps whatsoever so immediately right off the bat we're gonna be importing a ton of wood we're gonna build three logging camps in and out and we are gonna try and focus on getting tools produced right away because we're gonna need a lot of tools for the amount of constructions that we are planning on and we're going to build two tooling workshops in our capital of Tonk. Agriculture-wise, yeah, we're going to have to really build up our agriculture. Rice farms, guess what? We're going to bump you up to... I'm just going to bump you up to 10 because this is going to be our main agricultural sector anyways. Livestock ranches, we'll bump that up to... We'll also bump that up to 10. We build cotton plantations here? Yeah, we can. Livestock ranches does give us some fabric as well, uh, but I want a little bit more fabric out of this. So uh, we're going to build five uh, cotton plantations here in Macon, and we're going to build three textile mills here in, in Tonkin and then build three uh, furniture manufacturers here. So that should be actually a pretty good place to start off here. Uh, maybe if we promote social mobility here, that might be good. And immediately within the first month, East India Company is trying to conquer all well, two states from uh, Burma here. Uh, so we are going to just go ahead and declare neutrality here. In terms of government, we are going to want to encourage... We're going to get the Mahayana monks in uh, our government here. And we're going to have to get rid of slavery. It's going to be a challenge, though, because their landowners really don't want to get rid of them. However, we can kind of compromise with them by maybe doing a police force. But even then, that would really tick off our rural folk. They also suffer from insufficient taxation capacity. And that's because our population is so high, but we don't... I'm assuming we probably don't have a single government administration bill that we have. So we actually have to bump this up like a lot. And immediately we build our logging camps and we're already making money. So we're about to have a third logging camp and immediately jump into our tooling workshop. Another war? Oh, with Ching. And Burma is fighting for its life right now, it looks like. They didn't get a single ally. But they're, they're, they're going to try and fight it out against... The East Indy Company. What I'm going to do too, I'm going to be a little bit crazy here. I might be able to get attack Brunei and actually conquer them. Kind of curious to see if this will be a possibility. 
Hopefully nobody gets involved, like the East Indies. Which actually I could get the Dutch East Indies to join my side. Oh, hold up. Offer an obligation. So immediately, we're golden. We're good. <laughs> Brunei, you're about to be mine. And Brunei just backed out. So now we actually have a staging ground in Indonesia. Yeah, that was that was actually super easy. I was kinda I was thinking that we were gonna have to go to war. Maybe I could conquer this extra state from Sula, North Borneo. Maybe. Hopefully nobody sways with the. Oh, the Chinese just swayed with them. He gets Spain. Uh, I'm gonna back down on this. Yeah, I I don't want to fight China. Not yet. I'm I, I'm I'm content with just having North Borneo. I, basically controlling a nice little strait here. We are getting quite a bit of. Uh, Support for banning out slavery. That's a very radical move. I don't think that's a possibility, unfortunately. Oh, maybe I could get professional army. Yeah, yeah, let's do professional army. That's going to bolster up our support with the landowners. Should make it possible to ban out slavery. Get support another interest also. Let's learn interest in South China. Don't believe it. Burma's actually holding their own against East India Company right now. They're actually about to win that war. Gold has been discovered in North Borneo. Four gold mines here. Oh, that's nice though. Since we have the the authority to do so, let's um let's give our people in North Borneo some high fives and welcome them into the empty dump. Now we're making a lot of money. I'm assuming that's from gold. Yeah, we're making four thousand from minting, uh, which two thousand of that's coming from the gold fields in North Borneo. Now comes all the rice farms. So hopefully we can boost up our uh, standard of living a little bit here. I didn't even realize it either. I didn't even put any consumption. Which, if I'm gonna do any of these consumption taxes, uh, really don't have any that would want a good amount of money right now. I didn't even boost up taxes. I forgot about that. Let's actually lower the taxes to low tax. And we also got romanticism. Let's start swapping over production methods. Let's speed up the research on lathe. Since I'm speeding up the research on lathe, come on lathe, hurry up. Come on, we need more videos. Fast. Because we are building more rice farms, so the market price of grain is going to plummet down actually quite a lot um, making it a lot cheaper for people to just buy it so do intensive agriculture the agriculture is intensifying this is not good but the french made a defensive pact with siam and they also owe an obligation to the french okay ah slavery yeah yeah let's try to do this we have a 23 percent chance but and our landowners would be kind of unhappy but that's fine once you ban slavery you're all of a sudden you unlock Pretty much the full potential of your country. Britain wants us to join their customs union. Do I abandon my own market, join the British one? I mean, technically that would be the smart move, but I kind of, I want to, unlike the Central American game, unlike that game where I actually joined the British market, I'm going to go on my own. I want to try building up my economy from the ground up and maybe show you guys how they do. Low government legitimacy. Oh yeah, because the landowners, they left. Why? Because they still want slaves. They suck. But we can bump up our our tools, actually. Uh, we do have a tooling. Oh, we're not making any money, but that's because we're not using tools. So if we actually start using tools, like for our rice farms, which I just got intensive agriculture, and do the same with livestock branches that's actually going to create an, oh can't forget about our logging camps got to make sure we use the tools there too it's actually going to create an economy for our tools because nobody was using tools before now since we're creating a market for tools we are our tooling workshops are actually making money even though it's going down it was at 20 pounds now it's down to like seven it should stabilize and our total economy just went up even more so we're making 2,000 pounds a month let's also expand construction sector here in our capital so click an alt bumps that to the top and now i'm going to build that second let's see how that affects the economy we are we were making 2,000 pounds let's see if it brings down the economy a lot quite a bit i mean we're pretty much a 3,000 pound difference that that's okay though. another war well this time east india company wants to just straight up take over all of burma uh, no, I, I, I'm not trying to die, buddy. Portuguese defensive pact. Ooh, I, actually, I'm, I'm cool with that. Let's see if we also can't take over that state that we tried to last time from Sulu. Hopefully nobody sides with them this time. Uh, I should be able to get Dutch. Yeah, yeah, we could definitely get the Dutch here. Let's offer an obligation. And let's start researching railways. All right, anybody gonna side with Sulu? Please, no, no, I just want literally just this little northern part that's part of the same state as my northern borneo okay yeah they're good they're gonna back down nobody joined on their side so they're they're you're you're crazy sulu it's just you with one regiment my guy and the the dutch they immediately arrived in my land and they're dealing with the problem but i didn't i didn't even have to do this work 
the, the Dutch straight up just did it for me. That, that's awesome. It also helps that they only have literally one division. And now they're full occupied. All right. And there we go. We took over the rest of North Borneo. All right. And we are going to have to start bumping up even more of our logging camps. So, again, this is going to be our research state. We're going to bump this up actually to 10. I want a ton of logging. Also build a few more tooling workshops. Let's just bump this also. We'll actually bump this up to six. We're going to start building some dye plantations. Why are we going to build dye plantations? Because our textile mills needs to dye for dye workshops, which is the next step in producing even more clothes. Pretty much we get the dyes, we'll be able to produce more clothes and it'll sell for cheaper in our own markets. We're going to build three paper mills here. Once that's done, we're going to start bumping up our government administration building. That's going to bump up our bureaucracy. And we're also going to make a little bit more money then too, because we won't have insufficient taxation capacity. So we'll bump these both up to five. And we can bump up our furniture uh, to late. And that's actually going to give us a little bit more money because we're going to produce a little bit more furniture. And hopefully that bumps up our tooling workshops to make a little bit more money also. Furniture pr production is actually making us quite a bit of money here. Uh, in terms of the market, furniture is still pretty expensive. Fabric is still very cheap also. And we could try and abolish either serfdom or slavery. I feel like serfdom is going to be the easier one. Because it's not going to radicalize our landowners here. Slavery, however, definitely will. Also, our boy Burma got massacred. Uh, I kind of expected that. We're also going to swap over to intensive grazing. And that's going to use up more of our grain. Which will make it a little bit more expensive. But we're going to get some more fertilizer and fabric out of this. And hopefully that will help out our livestock. Because they're struggling right now. And we'll swap over to soil enriching farming so then that way our actual rice farms are using the fertilizer from the livestock ranches and that's the thing about this game pretty much in order for anything really to happen you have to create a market for something and you have to constantly update that market and also open up more avenues towards that market and find different uses for the byproducts of those markets in our case fertilizer and fabric and that's all going to go towards our rice farms and by doing so that's going to make our livestock ranches a little bit more profitable because now the fertilizer is being used by the rice farms and in turn the rice farms are producing more grain which is then being used in the livestock and we did just abolish serfdom finally so that moves us a little bit closer to getting like education reforms and stuff uh which actually we could get schools now so let's get some religious schools going also with cambodia i know that they're my tributary state but maybe let's try and make them a vassal i'm curious we should be able to make this happen Unless somebody like the East Indies gets involved, then that's going to be kind of a problem. But we could get the British and Cambodia immediately back down. Awesome. Permanently part of our market. At some point, we are going to go ahead and try and annex them. Yeah, we do have religious schools now. So that did put us in a negative for bureaucracy, which means we're getting a little bit more tax waste. But our literacy rate should be going up, which means we're going to get more people that are qualified to do some of these jobs. Maybe while we're at it, we have oh, we have a really high chance to get rid of slavery, but the issue is the uh, landowners would be really upset. Part of the reason why our tools are so expensive is we actually have quite a few buy orders. We get Bali's buying our tools, Burma's buying our tools, and so is Selangor. And then Netherlands, oh, Netherlands wants us to be a protectorate? Uh, no, I'm good. And keep in mind, this is me with low land-based taxation, no consumption tax. If I do a consumption tax, which that's fine like i definitely could i would be making money but i don't i'm just barely losing money i actually have quite a bit in gold reserves right now and a lot of times i i end up actually making money as the economy continues to grow slavery ban 50 percent again that would radicalize the landowner style if it wasn't for these landowners things would be a lot easier and then look now i was just talking about the money thing and now i'm making money that's because i'm my dye workshops are fully operational and they're actually fulfilling the orders to the textile mills in their entirety and our standard of living went down by 0.4 probably has something to do with services but to deal with services we have to bump up our urban center we can do but we need glass or we could also get coal so realistically glass is going to be the best option here so let's get glass works that does use some more wood that's okay we'll build three of those here in our capital finally getting our paper mills and since we're getting paper mills, I'm going to be going ahead and jumping up our filing cabinets a little bit. And now we're in the positive bureaucracy again. Maybe I could get slavery banned. 
Even though we have a 65% chance. Actually, a lot of our people want to ban slavery now. Which I might, in order to kind of balance this out, I'm going to go for a dedicated police force. It's going to put us again into negative bureaucracy, but that's what I need to do in order to... I have to compromise with my you know, my landowners here. It bumps up our landowners a little bit here. Now let's try debt slavery, which <laughs> it went from 65% chance to 18%, but it's still better than it was before. It's a country I worry about, yep, with Siam, but I could get France involved, which actually is nice because I could force that to break apart the French-Siamese alliance, right? Yeah, because they're still in that defensive pack. When I get the French, that's immediately the French sided with, with them. Okay, Cambodia. I'm going to hit the back down, which gives Cambodia independence. Oh, that sucks. Our economy actually took a small hit from losing Cambodia here. Uh, so what we can do to remedy that is I will bump up taxes. And I will impose a tax on liquor. We have another tool shortage. Oh, no. Once we get our iron mines up and running, that'll allow us to actually get the um, better tooling workshops. The slavery thing, man. It, it just won't go away. Ah, and I'm about to have a revolution. Why? Because my my landowners refuse to allow me to be to get rid of slavery. So now I have low legitimacy because my stupid landowners are have left the government. Stupid landowners. The thing is, all my people want to ban slavery except for the landowner. So it's so frustrating. Let's see what other type of things I could maybe pass. Since we have so much bureaucracy now, I could do charity hospitals or I could also bump up education. Let's do that. And let's also bump up our police force. As for our health system, we will actually try to do charity hospitals. Let's try the slavery thing again. It's 72% chance. As long as there's not a revolution. It'll, it should be fine. All I have to do is just pass this law and I'll be fine. Oh my god. Not the revolution, dude. I was about to pass the... I'm about to just do this revolution. I don't even care. It needs to happen. Slavery needs to be banned in my country. And it looks like Qing and France are actually going to side with us. And then Siam's probably going to side with our aristocratic revolt here. Let's also mobilize generals. I just hired the, this. They sided with the other guys. Um... And I could get Ching. And that might even deter Siam from joining. All these little guys want to get involved now. Okay. Which, it just be me versus my revolt right now. Which, is it going to happen? Yeah. You guys are crazy. Especially because my French boys are here. Just, just don't look at the economy. The economy is kind of struggling. This whole state, this was such a good state. And now it's been, it's been burnt. Now we're going to ban slavery, finally. At least my GDP went up. But I have so much debt now. Well, we just banned slavery, so that's a big... We're going to pause construction. And unfortunately, we're going to have to start taxing things more, like services, to kind of get the economy back on track. Now that we don't have slavery, things are a little bit easier. Well, now the British are domineering towards us. How lovely. Maybe see if we can't conquer Cambodia while we're at it. We get the French. As long as nobody joins Cambodia's side, we are... Good to take them over. Uh, Alright, yeah, so it's just us versus Cambodia here. Let's get the army down here. And they do. Let's say it. You guys are kind of crazy, even though they're beating up our army. Officially, the entirety of Cambodia is ours. So I completed this. Uh, Malaysian. Vietnamese people are supreme. Now we're, we're making almost 9 million GDP. Pretty nice. But clicking on the state here, we do get more infrastructure and also more logging industry in the state here. That's actually pretty nice. All right, now we got our coal mines going here too. To actually get the atmospheric pump going here in our iron mine so that we'll actually get some more iron. Same thing with our coal mines. We actually get a little bit more coal. Ooh, rubber has been discovered in Vietnam. Let's also swap over our furniture and textile mills to better production methods that use coal. I'm gonna put a little bit more strain on the actual production of our tools. Our coal mines, you would think that they'd be booming right now, but I guess not. We are gonna have to build up more tooling workshops too. Oh yeah, we only have, we only have six. Okay, need more rubber. So many things. So we got gold rush. Uh, spread the word, please. Rubber rush. And another gold rush. Oh man, this state's about to get a lot of people. Uh, it's now 1876. Our GDP is at 14 and a half million. Our literacy rate is at 
And we have almost 10 million people living in our country. I'm also going to pass this for landed voting. We have a pretty high chance of doing this. This will help us start weakening the uh, landowners a little bit in our country. We're also finally building our first university, making sure our people get pretty well educated so they could qualify for these higher paying jobs. Oh, we now have landed voting. And now we could go for proportional taxation. Yeah. Also our flag changed and it looks even cooler now because it has a drag. And we did just get proportional taxation. Yes. Yeah, we're already making 14,000 pounds. And what that means, I could finally get rid of these additional taxes. I really wanted to. Oh, we are on high taxation. Never mind. Well, I took away those taxes. We are now losing a little bit of money. Actually, our GDP went down a bit here. Uh, We'll go back to taxing luxury clothes. I think we had tobacco. Well, we definitely had liquor. Yeah, we'll tax tobacco. We could be making a lot more money if we just got this tax waste thing under control. Oh man, our GDP is massive. It's 20 million. We started out with just 2 million GDP. Which, if we're looking at just GDP, that puts us just below uh, Japan here at 24 million. And Egypt, Spain, and then Scandinavia. Scandinavia has a pretty big one. Austria Hungary has the largest GDP by far with 336 million GDP. Uh, Jar wants to join our customs union? Oh, please. Yes. Expand the Vietnamese market. Let's see if I can maybe be a little bit crazy here. What if I can potentially uh, liberate the Philippines from Spain? What would happen here? My ally abandoned me. Thanks. Uh, Netherlands, buddy. Call it my obligation. Uh, Portugal, buddy. All in my other obligation. I could call it all these obligations. No wonder these people want to join. Belgium's getting right aside with Spain, interestingly enough. Oh, we finally got the Ripper. Yes. All right, we're at war with Spain. What would the Spa Spanish want out of this? Uh, subjugate Akak. Okay. Or a treaty port. Oh, man. All the fighting that's over here in Iberia. Literally all the fighting's happened in Iberia. Vietnamese troops are, have landed in Iberia. Oh, my guys versus the Belgians. Nah, it's not good. But the Belgians against the Dutch. Now oh, that's interesting. You would think... Or not Dutch. The Netherlands. And Dutch East Indies was forced out. Apparently. You would think that the Netherlands would be going ham on... Uh, well, Netherlands is just straight up out of this war. Okay. Yeah, Portugal was knocked out. Nice. Now it's just me versus Spain. And I have no boats. Uh, okay. Uh, peace deal? White peace. Perfect. Ah, the economy. And the needs so big. 24,000. Oh, man. Uh, we could probably... Yeah, we could definitely bump down these taxes a bit. Probably all the way down. And then all of a sudden, our people are probably going to start making a lot more money. Now we're building railroads, too. No more horses in this country. Ends up making a lot more money. Let's, uh, yeah, we'll go back to bumping up the military. I think we could actually afford having a big military now. If we can't also make this guy into our vassal. For a while they were our ally, but, uh, let's see what, what we can do with them. And look at that. Look at that. We're immediately making a ton of money. Railroads and just the amount of infrastructure in our country right now. It, it's insane. Vietnam is one of the most highly industrialized countries in the world right now with 43 million GDP. In 1895 putting us right below spain and we're almost we've almost caught up to great britain who's at 63 million gdp right now our economy just keeps going and now i can actually swap over to rail transportation on all my stuff because i have railroads everywhere one thing i love about victoria 3 is like as you expand your cities like even smaller towns pop up so like this is literally just an iron and coal town like right here and of course the city is just massive now this is all lumber camp town. Oh, this looks so cool with the train going alongside the mountains here. Get out of here, France. This looks so cool with the train going along the mountains here. Oh, that is just awesome. We are officially the 13th greatest power in the world right now. I'm going to end the first part of this video right here. We made it to January 1st, 1900. We are the 15th greatest power in the world. And we have over 63 million GDP, putting us uh, at the 8th largest economy in the world by 1900 our literacy rate is huge is amazing it's at 73 percent our our standard living could definitely be better i see our middling class is actually struggling right now 
Uh, we have about 11 million people living in our country and actually a lot of radicals. Financially, we're making a lot of money right now. We're making 22,000 pounds a week and uh, we're building a lot of buildings. Granted, we have 19 pages worth of stuff, but it's all getting built at a very, a very, very rapid rate. So that's where I'm going to call it for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you guys like and subscribe to my channel. Also, make sure that you guys let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this, uh, think of this, what your thoughts are on this playthrough, and what country I should do next after the next video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Chairman out.